<laughs> you guarantee what? She's worth a lot oh, more yeah, than four hundred fifty yeah. million dollars. Her art alone, and like those talk show hosts, her devil worshiping art alone. <laughs> it's just it's too much. I can't stand these rich celebrities who want us to feel sorry for them. We don't, right? It's yeah. like all those you saw, like Julia Roberts on the Oprah special with Kamala Harris, like oh, and Meryl Streep. Like, I know, winning over the hearts of people who live in gated communities everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, are these still your people? Are you still in California? No, I had to move out of California because yes. I got little kids. And we understand it's why it's dangerous that you know in California take your kids you know in public schools you know in the morning you drop off a girl in the afternoon you pick up a boy <laughs> you know you never know what you're gonna get um, but I really didn't feel it was safe in California and I felt it's very interesting because I I'm getting those calls and I'm sure you are too where people call you and say I wish I could come out and say what I believe what you know I, I agree with you I just can't and my favorite was my lawyer who called me my entertainment lawyer. And uh, I want to sell him out and say his name now, but I'm not going to. Um, Eric, I'll say his first name. Okay, good. And he said, you know, I thought you were nuts five years ago. But now that my kid's in uh, in first grade and I, I can't believe what they're doing to him in the oh. school. And it's a private school. So I can just imagine what's happening to public school. And I would say to all those rich liberals out there in Los Angeles, if you're lucky enough to send your kid to uh, private schools, most people are being educated in public schools. And, and the garbage and the indoctrination that's happening to those kids is... It's going to affect society, and that's how inescapable. The, and that's how the um, you know the Maoist uh, revolution uh, didn't die. It just it went underground because in the 1960s, Marcuse was one of the, the the heads of it was was realizing that the revolution wasn't going to happen with the worker because the worker realized well, well the, the the revolutionaries realized that the workers knew that capitalism worked. It improved their lives and the lives of their children, and so the the, the revolution wasn't going to come through the worker. So they were going to have to do what. They were going to have to infiltrate education. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they did starting in the late 1960s and the 70s in university levels. You know, one of them was um, Kamala Harris's dad. Yeah, who was, an avowed uh, Marxist. An avowed Marxist teaching um, Marxism at Stanford. And that was when it was ideologically cute. So, well, let's include this. But what really was happening it was this indoctrination was spreading out to where by, by, by 1990, it was getting into K through 12. And then by 2010, it's 20 year marks, basically. By 2010, the capture had been complete. So that, that, that agenda is out there. And so you really have an indoctrination that is really trying to, what, what, if you had to say, well, what are they doing really? They want to create such confusion and such a disharmony and anger and fighting. It doesn't matter what. If they want to argue about gender, which bathroom, allowing kids to in sports, so, you know, boys into girls' locker rooms, or whether it's, um, you know, race and judging people by the color of their skin. If you're white, you're automatically race, uh, racist or, 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 you know, uh, or sexuality and this, this, you know, the, the trans issues. It is to create so much chaos that people are willing to trade off their liberties, their freedoms for a sense of calm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing with bringing in 30,000 Haitians into Ohio. It's like enough, we give. What do we have to do to get some calm here? Mm -hmm. And at, at a certain point, if you love your country, you have to stand up and say enough of this. And the only way to get, since we're only allowed to have two, two parties, the only way to have a normal Democratic Party is to kick them out. And so they could lose three times in a row, like two Reagan administrations and then one Bush, so that you end up with what? A centrist Clinton administration again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only way forward for- But why the, is it so tight then? What, if, if the electorate's starting to get that- I don't believe that it's that tight. I think you have 95% of the, uh, well, obviously all the tech companies outside of Twitter, thank you, Elon Musk, pray for him. Same. Um, is, you know, ideologically captured by the left. And, you know, all the newspapers, they're, you know, you used to have people, um, as Glenn Greenwald said, you know, in the 1970s, you had hardworking middle-class people who wanted to go into uh, journalism because they wanted to make the world a better place. Now you have these rich kids coming into media and blogging um, because they have a grievance. Um, so why is it so close? I think that, um, I think fear works for the Democrats. It really does. I think you can scare people and, and, you know, you can continue to lie and say that in Charlottesville, you know, Trump said there are good people on both sides, including Nazis, even though that was repeated by the New York times this past week. It's just, well, if, if you Doesn't lie, matter how many times it's been debunked. Well, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really out of the, uh, you know, national socialist Joseph Goebbels playbook. If you just keep lying enough and they'll, they'll believe it. And that's what's interesting. Um, if you, you have to look back at this historically and the Nazis, they knew propaganda, um, the totalitarian, the, to, the, the, the totality of the propaganda was, was very critical for them to succeed, to take away all the rights from the citizens of Germany starting in 1934. And um, what they realized is that, you know, we can have the, the newsreels, we can have the radio, uh, but people don't, and we can have the newspapers, but people don't have to read the newspapers they don't have to go to uh, the movie to so see the newsreels. They don't have to turn on the radio. So, but here's one thing they can't avoid, the citizenry. 
billboards. And that's why they were ubiquitous in, um, in Nazi Germany, because they just covered you and showered you with this. So it's the same mouthpiece that has been used for the liberal, you know, liberal intelligentsia now. It's just a, it's just buckshot. Just shoot enough of it and see what sticks and mm -hmm. see what can get people's fear because they don't have ideas. The Democratic National Convention didn't run on ideas. They're not for anything. It's what they're against. They're against any limits on abortion and they're against- That's another big motivator. And they're against anything to do with Donald Trump. And they're hoping against all hope that Americans will hate Donald J. Trump more than they love their country. And that's their, and that's their whole plan. All right, I gotta plan. take a brief break. But when we come back, I wanna talk about, I mean, it's very obvious you were, would not be allowed to remain in Hollywood with these opinions. <laughs> it's very clear to my entire audience why Small you got kicked out. Pay. But we'll get into it. But be, again, it's called You Can Do It by Rob Schneider. Speak your mind, America. You can do it. More on that and Rob's life right after this.